Hello and welcome to the first installment of Tips and Tricks with an Unreal Engine where I show you simple solutions to push your environments just that much further and get it to that next level. Working on projects such as the Mandalorian series, Book of Boba Fett, Avatar Last Airbender and many more, these are some of the tips and tricks that I've used personally on these shows to push these environments that much further, getting it to that final polished sort of look. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to be talking about layering details and more specifically we're going to be talking about layering in this case the ground. So here we have a simple scene, a uh, simple cave path, all of this is made with Megascan assets and Unreal Engine modeling tools. And so we're going to take this and I'm going to show you how we broke it down into this, adding just those secondary and tertiary little details to really bring it to life and also break up some of those repeating patterns we see here in this sort of riverbed you know, uh, pebbly path, right? And so first, let me just break down the layers and show you exactly what's going on here. So first, we have the secondary rock um, assets. So these are, the purpose for these is more so large shapes to break up silhouettes, break up the ground a bit, also hide some of the tiling that might be going on or re repeating assets that might be too obvious. And these, again, they're all just mega scan assets. You know, we're just using, like for example, we're using this uh, canyon, sandstone, rocky ground. Uh, this was a great one for this scene, this eroded uh, cliff face. And again, you know, this this thing is just, is just moved and duplicated all over the place. It's just been rotated, scaled a little bit differently. And so the tiling isn't as noticeable, but you can actually kind of see it here. You can kind of see some repetition here. You can also see where the mesh might not have gone perfectly into the ground right here as well. And so these these are things not to get too caught up on as we start laying, layering in these details. You know, we start from the larger details and we work our way in. So from here, what we did is using the modeling tools, which I'll be showing you in a moment, is we're we actually made these ground mesh assets. And they're just sampled from the actual ground texture and this way we can use this to blend in even more detail as well as using that same texture we use for the ground and so that it matches perfectly. This way everything is more symbiotic, right? Everything looks natural. You don't have to worry about is this matching or not because it's, it's the exact same thing. And we can all also use it as we can see that seam over here we had before. Uh, we don't see it anymore. So that's why I'm saying don't worry about those things too much in the very beginning as you're laying these out. The most important thing is to lay the assets out, you know, as you see fit, however, you know, that may be, and then you can start hiding things. So, you know, that's what pieces like, like this is for, right? So, you know, let's say we wanted more buildup right here. We would just take this and just move it, rotate it into place. And now we have a little bit more buildup right there, for example, right? And after that, Again, we have the, I mean, this might be fine, right? You might look at this and say, well, this is, this is good. This is, I can settle on this, but we want to add that extra little bit more detail, right? We want to add just this tertiary, just little pebbles, a little bit of foliage for a scene like this. We don't want to go too crazy with the greenery, um, but yeah, adding these sort of rocks also breaks it up and it just helps your, your eyes a little bit more as it navigates through the scene. And so right now we're actually going to talk about building these ground meshes as well as this riverbed. It's very simple and this is how we did it. So first thing that we did, we're going to want to do is actually come up here, go to plugins, edit plugins, and you're going to want to want to make sure that your modeling tools editor is enabled. If it's not, you know, click the checkbox. It's going to ask you to restart, restart the engine. And then from there, you'll see this modeling tab pop up. So we're going to click on modeling and we're just going to grab a rectangle. And from here, you know, <laughs> in this scene, it, this rectangle is going to go all crazy. Uh, we want it to be flat. So we're just going to turn off align to normals. And this way, regardless, it's just going to be flat. So just hit accept. Uh, I like to scale it by a factor of two. And then from here, what we're going to do, you know, we need to obviously add some displacement, right? if we were to just come in here and grab this rock texture paste it we all know it's just it's going to be flat however 
if we were to just displace it, you come in here, you go to, you go down to deform, displace, change from Perlin noise to texture 2D map. If we were to actually use the displacement texture in here, which is in the blue channel, you see it's still not really giving us anything, right? So what we're going to want to do is we need to add some more geometry to this rectangle. So in order to do that, we're going to go over here to Mesh Ops and hit the Remesh Plus button. Click on that. Uh, this is going to be a Nanite Mesh 5000 is okay. You know, one thing that I'll tend to do is if the geometry is getting a bit too heavy is afterwards, I'll end up coming down here and doing Simplify after we've already added the geometry and the displacement to it. Uh, you can also use like ZBrush and Decimate it, you know, whichever works. Uh, for now though, we want to stay as much in the engine as possible. So hit accept on the remesh, and then we're gonna come back here to displace. And depending on the texture map, it might be a little bit too intense, right? Like this is way too much, this doesn't look good. So in that case, we're just gonna turn it down, turn it up, three, yeah, three seems to be okay. And again, the, the way in which we know that it's in the blue channel is because it's actually in the naming of it. So if you look at the actual texture, ORD, that stands for Occlusion Roughness Displacement. So that's how you know that, so RGB, ORD, so that's how you know displacement is in the blue channel. And also if you were to open it and sort of cycle through, you can also visualize, you know, which maps are in what. Yeah, so now we're going to hit accept. And so now we have a plane with displacement, but it's still not quite there. So it's not quite there because as we can see, if it were to be flat, yeah, it'll work, right? But if we start moving it, rotating it, it's like, you know, we're going to have to just keep everything on this angle, which we don't necessarily want to do. If that's what you're going for, then it would work, right? If we want to just do this, you know, maybe you just want to have it just up against the cliff wall, then yeah, you could just do this. But... For us, we want to take it a step further, and what we're going to do is we're going to use the lattice deformer, right? So again, these are just simple steps. We're not, you know, we're not hand sculpting rock meshes, you know, which we can always do. It just takes time, right? So we're just going to grab all these points. So hold shift and just drag, grab all these points, and then just move them down a little bit, and then hit accept. And then from here, so now we have a little bit of this drop off. And that's going to really help us as we come in here and we start rotating it, moving it around. And now it actually fits into place a bit better. We don't have just edges going all over the place. You know, it, it actually works as intended. And you can see again, because it's the same mesh as the ground, it, it's all going to blend in just seamlessly. And the beautiful thing, too, is you can come in here and just rotate these pieces you know if you're going to rotate it you want to change it from world axis to the object axis otherwise you know it'll rotate it like that but if you have it like on an inclination like this then you can you know do object and you can rotate it so this way you know if i were to come in here and let's say i just put a bunch of these together so this, rotate, this, rotate. Yeah, so very quickly we can actually just change the breakup, you know, so it doesn't look like, like a repeating pattern, like how it usually would, right? And so again, that's how we do that. We're going to, whoops, also have some of these grouped. Yeah. And so again, for these, the build up, foliage on that one yeah for the build up it's literally just a plane you throw a texture on it uh, you throw the displacement texture on it you give it the material and then you start layering the details in the scene and it's it is the same process for for this you know if we hide it we see there's literally nothing underneath our set right and the way this was made was the same technique that I just showed. The only difference is instead of 
using the lattice tool and pulling down the edges, what I did is under lattice, I just grabbed the middle sections and I just pulled them down uh, to create this shape. And so this way, you know, you get this, this sort of, you know, stream type shape. You can rotate it a little bit, you know, just change it up. Uh, but then again, the problem with this was the repeating pattern, right? It's like we could see the same rock repeat, repeat, repeat. And so then we started layering these details. You know, this is a very common mistake that I see on projects all the time. Or it might be something where one of my students at Noman might be, might get caught up on their set looking as to how do I push it that much further. And what it really comes down to is sometimes you just have to layer in details. Um, yeah, and if you guys are curious as to just one last tidbit, uh, this water, all these textures have a waterline function that I added to it. It's very simple. I'll just show that real quick as a bonus. So we're using the mega scan master material. We're not changing this, um, but we do have this waterline function. The way this looks, if we open Unreal Engine, is first of all, I added a switch, so not everything has it on. And the albedo is being, you know, I just adjustment to the brightness, saturation, things like that. Um, but the actual water line, to get it like that, it just looks like this. So it's just a function with one for roughness, and then this is the mask. And what the mask here is doing is it's taking the absolute world position, so the position of the entire world, and we have a mask on the blue channel, so the z-axis going up and down. And then we subtract it by a parameter that controls the level. So it just goes up and down. Um, but as we can see, we need this to be, oops, start previewing. When you have it like this, it's actually flipped. So which is why we add the one minus node. So if any of you are curious what this is, you may right click one minus, and that's what this is. Start previewing. And yeah, and then all of that just gets plugged into a lerp. And so again, if you're adjusting the mega scans material, what you would do is you would just, from here, you would just grab a break material attributes, plug this in. You grab a make material attributes. And I'm just gonna copy paste the roughness here. And you would just start plugging everything in, right? You just italic, except the roughness, you would plug into this. So that lerp, say linear interpolate. And you take that, plug that into roughness and you know, so on and so forth, plug normal into normals. And then this would ultimately, you know, go into the default material. Yeah, that's how you would set up that waterline so you can have the control. So for example, if I take this, negative 12 can change to like zero. Zero goes add, negative 12. And then yeah, the cool thing is because it's in the absolute world position, we go up and down. You see, the, the waterline will always stay how it should. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll be making more content like this moving into the future, as well as videos on virtual production, ranging from roles within virtual production to environment creation, specifically for virtual production, and things like that. If there's anything specific that you guys would like to see, please let me know in the comments down below. Catch you next time.